First Timothy chapter number one. I'm going to share with you some thoughts out of First Timothy chapter one that I believe the Lord has laid upon my heart to bring to our church. Partially, I guess, as I was thinking about it, I was praying about what the Lord would have me to preach or the kind of messages he would have me to preach here at the beginning of the year and, and uh, trying to get things going as far as our church is concerned. And, you know, we don't, we don't have like a big theme. Some churches have a big theme for the year and they kind of center their, their year around that one theme. And we don't necessarily do that at our church. We, we have banners in the back and we got a couple, we always switch those out at the missions conference in March and that kind of gets a new banner for the year. But um, but I do pray about what the Lord would have us to do and what direction he'd have us to go as far as the church is concerned. Um, we are a, uh, a church that is concerned about the lost souls that need to know the Lord Jesus Christ in our area as well as around the world. And so one of the things that the Lord has been impressing upon me as far as um, our church is concerned is how our outreach is doing and what are we doing to get the gospel out. We're already doing a lot, for a small church especially. Um, we have a great missions program. We are reaching a lot of people around the world in some small part by giving to missions, and we're doing a great job in that. Um, we do several things um, in our area to, to get the gospel out to the folks that we have an opportunity to witness to. Um, we emphasize it all the time in our messages. Um, we have a vacation Bible school, and that's one of the biggest things we'll do as far as outreach is concerned over the, over the year. Um, but the Lord has impressed upon me as a pastor here and, and as our church to, to do more this year as far as outreach is concerned. And so, um, uh, and that's one of the things that, that um, I see our church doing as far as, as, as an emphasis as far as what we want to do this year, and that is to get the gospel out and We've done a great job, like I said a moment ago, as far as being part of missions, but to get the gospel out more than we ever have up until now in this, in this area here. And so, but as I was praying about that and, and thinking along those lines, and that's not really even had to do with the message today, but as I was praying about that and, and thinking along those lines, um, the Lord directed me to 1 Timothy, where I want to share a few thoughts with you this morning out of 1 Timothy. And so, um, let, me, let me do this. Let's just not make this another Sunday, right? We get together every Sunday, and we have church, and oftentimes, because we do it every Sunday, it becomes routine. Apathy, right, is, is very detrimental. The apathy can really hurt any, any people. Um, as we're going through the book of Judges in the adult Sunday school class, right, that's what happens with them. They, God blesses them, God helps them as they cry out to him. Then what do they do? They fall back into sin continually over and over again. The Bible says that they did evil again in the sight of the Lord. Part, at least part of that is just apathy. It'd be interesting to take the dates, the time frames, and see how long that the book of Judges takes because oftentimes, you know, there'll be 40 years sometimes uh, servants to those who are oppressing them, and they'll have to call out to God. And so a lot of time goes by, and so apathy sets in. Let's not make this another Sunday where we come to church and we sing some songs, you know, and we, we hear a sermon and we go home. Let's really, let's really see if we can get God here today. Uh, we want to have God in on what we're doing here. Amen. We don't want to just be, you know, there's a lot of churches you can go to today where you're going to go through religious rituals. And we can do that, and a lot of churches, you can go to the churches and do that, but how many of those people are going to go serving their time, doing their thing uh, on a Sunday, and then going to go out the rest of the week and live however they want to live, not thinking about God at all? This is church. All right? We're here to, to worship the Lord. Let's not come here with hearts that aren't in tune with what God would have us to have today. Let's come here with the idea or thought that we want the Lord to speak to us. We want God to show us today what he wants for us. And so that's, that's my desire. I mean, it's easy for me to think that way because I've been thinking about what I'm going to say today and, and ask the Lord to, to draw. But I'm going to tell you something. If you made that your desire, and if you said, boy, God, I, I want to come to church and really hear from you. I really want you to speak to my heart today. Could you imagine what the Lord would do for us in our church services? Amen. Let's just do that today. Let's just ask the Lord to really 
really speak to our hearts. So we're in 1 Timothy. We're going to read one verse together. And then we're going to pray. And we're going to ask God to really, you know, just move us today. And maybe it's not something I say, or maybe it's not the message at all, but you just know God's going to do a work. And we can come with that kind of anticipation. How many of you think God can do something in your heart and your life today? Raise your hand. Absolutely. Absolutely. All of us think that, right? Let's just ask God to do it. And so we're in 1 Timothy. Let's all stand together as we normally do. I'm out of respect of God, if you are able. And we're going to read one verse together. And then, uh, and then I'm going to pray and I'm going to ask God to do what I just talked about. And then we're going to get into our message this morning. So 1 Timothy chapter number 1. 1 Timothy chapter number 1 verse number 6 says, For which some having swerved have turned aside unto vain jangling. Now we're going to look at that verse and get it in context in just a moment, but I want you to notice here, from which some having swerved and turned aside. I want to give you a message this morning, how to not swerve. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we know that you are here amongst us. And Lord, we know that you want to do a work. And Lord, the problem is not with you. The problem is with us if you don't do a work in our hearts today. And Lord, I pray that you would help us to be in tune with what you would have for us. And Holy Spirit, more important than the message that I have put together and more important than the songs that we sang and more important than the program we have going here and, and all those things are good, but more important than any of that, Holy Spirit, is that you work in our hearts and lives. Help us today not to just simply get together again and do the same thing we've always done, but Lord, help us to know that your presence is here and help us, Lord, to be ready to make a decision for you. Lord, I pray you'd please move in this service. Help us, Lord, to, to know you better and to be changed as, of effect, uh, change as, as a result, Lord, of being here together and, your, and hearing your word. Thank you for what you've blessed us with in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. We see here in 1 Timothy, Timothy is a book written by Paul. It is entitled Timothy, but it's written by Paul. Verse number one says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the commandment of God, our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ, which is our hope. So here we see Paul who wrote the book of 1 Timothy and the Bible says an apostle of Jesus Christ. The word apostle means sent one. And so Paul is sent by the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul is commissioned, commanded by the Lord Jesus Christ to do what he does. God has a calling on his life to spread the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And by the way, God's got a calling on your life as well. Now we can look at the life of Paul and say, man, what a great man of God. Well, God used him in a great way. In fact, the letters that he wrote became scripture that we hold in our very hands today. Now, they are settled in, in heaven forever. Could you imagine that God chose Paul to be that one to write that? And, and we can say Paul's been used in a great way, but the truth is God wants to use every single one of us in a great way like he used Paul. Paul is sent from God, and you and I are also can be used of God, and we can carry out the plan that God has for our lives. So here we have Paul, and a sent one, an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ by the commandment of God. Well, there's a whole, I've never even gotten to the message yet, but boy, he's following the commandments of God. Let me ask you a question. Where do we get the commandments of God today? The Bible. How are we going to know to do the commandments of God? We're going to read the Bible. I will not stand up here and preach anything other than the Word of God, the Bible. Okay, we're not going to get up here and do... Traditions, we're not going to get up here and allow anything else to become preeminent or more important than the Lord Jesus Christ and his word. And so Paul has a, uh, a message that he's giving and he, and he is sent from God and you have the commandment of God, our, uh, our Savior, and the Lord Jesus Christ, which is our hope. And there's so much more I'd like to say about that first verse, but we must hasten on. Um, verse number two says, unto Timothy. So we see it's written by Paul in verse one, and he's writing this letter to Timothy, hence the name of the book, 1 Timothy. So Paul is writing a letter to Timothy, in verse number two, unto Timothy, my own son in the faith. What a wonderful title he has for this Timothy. Timothy would be somebody that Paul had great influence over. 
uh, somebody he considered his own son in the faith, a convert of Paul's that, that, that he could look at and say, I'm, I'm going to help Timothy to grow, help Timothy to become what he ought to be. And my own son in the faith he referred to him as. And then he says, grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and Jesus Christ our Lord. Now, I'm going to give you quickly, with the brief time we have, a few points here. i got four different points on on how not to swerve, right? But the first thing we have to settle is something he said here in verse number two, unto Timothy, my own son in the faith, grace, mercy, and peace from, from who? From God. That's right. From God, our Father, and Jesus Christ, our Lord. You and I, we need a lot more God in our life. You and I need a lot more of the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to be knowing God even better. We need to be constantly building that relationship we have with the Lord Jesus Christ. And it starts with salvation. The Bible says that uh, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, and there's only one answer for that sin. Someday you're going to stand before the Lord either uh, at the, the mercy seat of Christ where you'll be rewarded for the works that you've done as a believer, or you're going to stand before the great white throne judgment where you're going to have to give an answer for the sin that you've committed. Right? And the only answer that will allow you into heaven is by saying, I put my faith in the Lord Jesus Christ who died for my sins. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, the Lord Jesus Christ. We need more, more of the things of God in our life. Right? As a believer, we need to read the Bible more. We need to spend more time in prayer. Um, I, I, uh, I recently... I've been listening to the Bible a lot more on, on my phone app. I have a Bible app on my phone, and you can hit the little play button, and it'll, it'll read the Bible out loud. Um, uh, and not only does it read the Bible out loud, it, it dramatizes it. Like the voices are different when different people are speaking, and there's background noise. I was just listening to, you know, we're going, I started in Genesis, and of course, because it's the beginning of the year, and I was just listening to Genesis uh, 6 and 7 and 8, right in there when, when we talked about Noah, and when it talked about all the animals coming out of the ark, you could hear the animals in the background. It's amazing. It really is amazing how much access we have to the Bible, the Word of God. We really have no excuse. It, we have so much access to it, but yet, uh, and by the way, for those of you who are doing a Read the Bible Through in a Year program, praise the Lord for that, I'm glad you are. Um, it, it, it's really a shame that we, it's so difficult for us to do that. The other day, I sat down and I, I read three chapters, and I actually played it on, the, on my little phone, and I, I read along as it played, and I looked at the time, read three chapters, and then I stopped it, and it took less than ten minutes. Most Bible reading programs read the Bible in a year. Um, it would be about three to four chapters a day. Do we have ten minutes a day to listen to the Word of God? Of course we do. Uh, and so, anyway, we need more God in our life, right? All those things that we know we're supposed to do, be doing for the Lord. We need more of that in our life, to be paying more attention to the things of God and have more God in our life, okay? Um, uh, uh, we will stay the straight and narrow, stay on the path that we ought to be on following the Lord as we keep our focus on the Lord Jesus Christ in our lives. And I want to help you today. Limited time we have because of the, the baptism. I'm not going to take too much time, but I want to help you today on how not to swerve or how not to uh, uh, veer off right from serving the Lord, how to keep your focus on the Lord uh, as, as, uh, as, as Paul wrote to Timothy here in verse number, number six, which, uh, from which some having swerved and have turned aside. And we want to do, don't want to do that, of course, in our own lives. And so how will we not swerve in our service for the Lord uh, in our lives this coming year or whatever it is? Okay, several things. Number one, how are we not going to swerve? How are we not going to turn aside? Number one, wait on the Lord. I want you to notice what it says here in verse number three. So verse number two tells us, unto Timothy, my son in the faith, grace, mercy, and peace. We get that from God the Father and Jesus Christ our Lord. Okay, we've got to have more God in our lives. But then what does he tell him? Number, verse number three says this, as I besought thee to abide still at Ephesus. Paul is telling Timothy, stay where you're at, abide still, I'm giving you some instructions, and sometimes the best advice that we can get is to simply wait. Wait on the Lord. So often we make hasty decisions because we don't take the time it's required to pray about something. So often we, we find ourselves in a situation where we, we react instead of act like we should. And something comes up, and if you're ever in a situation where you're forced to make a quick decision, it's time to say, you know what, I'm stepping back. 
I don't need to make a decision at all. I need to think about what is happening here. And sometimes we just need to set everything aside and say, Lord, I'm just going to wait. Well, I, I, you know, you get anxious. We've got to see things happen. We live in such a, a fast-paced society. We want to see things happen right now. We don't want to wait for anything. We want everything to happen to us right now. We want to go to the, you know, that's why we have fast food restaurants, because the food's fast. It's in our hands quickly. Uh, and we're impatient. And, and uh, you know, all these things that, we, that, that press upon us, that so we can have everything right now. But yet, sometimes we just need to learn to stop and step aside and say, God, I'm going to wait on you and allow you to give instructions. I don't have to have all the answers right now. I don't have to know everything right now. I need Need your instruction is far more important than I need something to happen immediately. Far more important than something happening quickly, I need to make sure it happens properly. And it's God's timing, all right? Wait on the Lord. Psalm 27, 14 says, Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, uh, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Isaiah chapter 40, verse number 31, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up their wings as eagles, and they shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. If I were to ask you a question today, if you took more of a broad term of the word strength, not just physical strength, but strength to make it through whatever difficulties you have, how many of you would say, Pastor, I need more strength? <laughs> Many of us, if not all of us, I'm dealing with something in my life and I feel weak in that area. I need more strength. The strength that's going to sustain and get you through it is the strength you get from God. Let me read those verses again with that in mind, right? Say, Patrick, I need more strength. Psalm 27, 14. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Isaiah 40, 31, 40, 31, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up their wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. We can get strength from the Lord as we need it. Just waiting upon the Lord. Sometimes the best answer for me to give as a pastor as far as advice is to say just stop and pray. Ask the Lord, what's, what direction should I go? God can show us. God can help us. Uh, listen, we, we had, a, we had a, a bus here. We bought a bus with the intention of having it for our school. It was a big yellow bus, a big, one of the big 72 passenger buses. Weren't sure what to do with it. We had a hard time getting a license. We were supposed to get a DOT number. Everybody else had an opinion on what we were supposed to do, so we just, we just sat on that thing for a while. We ended up having her probably... <laughs> Three years, I think we had that bus, and I, I just didn't know what to do with it. And I thought we really should, we'd love to run a bus ministry and pick up, you know, children for church and bring them to church. And uh, but it just wasn't working out. God wasn't directing in that. And I thought, what should we do with this thing? Turn out we were going to get a new piano, and we were going to get rid of our old piano. And so we called uh, Brother Tim Aguiar, who's crazy enough to drive all the way up here from South Texas in a pickup truck and take a grand piano. And so since we found someone that crazy, we decided to call him up and say, come up and take it. And so he did. He drove up here. While he was here getting the piano, I offered him our church van, which wouldn't make it across the parking lot these days. And so I jokingly offered him our church van because I, I knew he couldn't take it because I don't even know. Like I said, honestly, it might not make it across the parking lot if you tried to drive it. <laughs> uh, but then in response to that, he said, what are you doing with that bus? And I said, brother, I said, we've had this bus for years and we've not used it yet. I said, you can have it for whatever we paid for it. Uh, and, uh, and, and then I talked to the deacons about it and they said, Pastor, why don't we just give it to them? I said, that's a good idea. I said, Brother, if you want it, you can just have it. If you just fly up here and take it. I talked to him last week. They run it for a bus route at their church. I think it was last week they had 58 kids come to church on that bus. The bus captain has diabetes and lost his leg from the knee down and he still gets up on that bus every week and bring those kids into church. Now, we were just waiting on the Lord, and the Lord brought the perfect person to come along to bring that bus, and, and praise the Lord for that. Uh, and he had a little trouble getting it down there. <laughs> he ran into some problems. The reason he called me is we actually sent him some more money. We, we gave him a bus that broke down halfway down, not even halfway down. I think he got a couple of down the road, a few hours down the road, and he broke. So we sent him some money to help him out with that, and he called me up to thank me for the money and just had to tell me, you know, we, we, he said last week, he said, there's a town 
that they do Christmas lights and, and they, the whole town lights up, the police department, the, the fire department, every house, they all put up lights and it's just a really neat thing to see. And so the bus captain of that bus route, who's the one-legged guy who, who can't probably hard walk very well, gets up every week and takes that bus to pick up kids. He took all the bus kids to that town on that bus to show them all the lights and and, uh, and, and no doubt, you know, he just uh, had, I think it was just recently, he said, just had one of the young people off that, that bus route get saved and get baptized at their church. And what a wonderful thing, right? As we're wondering what we're going to do with this bus, let's just wait on the Lord. And God provided somebody that wasn't only just going to take the bus and use it for whatever, he was able to use that bus to reach souls for the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? We're waiting on the Lord. God will give us the answer to our questions if we wait on him. Him. By the way, he's using that piano for the service of the Lord, too. He says, not a week goes by that there isn't kids in our church who are learning how to play piano. A, their youth group has their own piano back there, and they play it every Sunday. Praise the Lord. Uh, God is good as we wait upon him. We just need to wait. You're anxious today? Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do. I, I don't know where the answer is going to come from. Hey, wait on the Lord. God will direct in that. God will give you, all right, what you need as you wait upon him. Sometimes we want the answer really fast, and we don't need the answer fast. God knows what is best. If I were to ask you, if I were to say to you, if I were to corner you and say, do you think God knows what is best? Of course you would say, yes, God knows what's best. <laughs> That's an easy question, Pastor. Obviously, God knows what's best. But if I were to say to you, are you acting in your life like God knows what's best? What would you have to say to that? Well, you know, I do things every day that I don't even ask God about it. I would say the same thing. I wake up every day and make decisions all the time, not talk to the Lord about it. But why don't I? Because God knows what's best. He would know the best decision I should make, and I should ask him. Well, I wish there was some place I could go. What if we set up a machine, a computer, out in the foyer way at our church, and I said, you can go to that computer, and uh, you can type in anything you want, and it'll tell you the answer. What a great thing, huh? We could allow you a big crowd here. <laughs> It's, it's amazing, this computer we have in the back. Any question you want, any personal question, anything you want, you type it in, it'll come back with the answer and it'll tell you. You say, wow, that would be an incredible thing to have. You know, we serve a God who has all the answers. Mm -hmm. Yet we don't talk to him, and he knows what's best for us, and if we could just talk to him, but we can talk to him, and we can pray to him, and, and because we want things so immediately, we don't have the patience to just wait on God when he does have the answer for us. We just need to wait on him. And I'm just in the first point, and we're just about out of time. <laughs> but maybe this is what you need to hear today. I know it's what I need to hear today. Whew. I need to wait upon God. Um, uh, part of our problem is, a large part of our problem is, is we're looking for the answer in so many other places because we want things done quicker. We want to know why this has happened and what we can do about it, and we don't have to, have to wait for the answer. But yet we need to wait upon the Lord. Um, waiting upon God. How will we not swerve? How are we not going to get off track? Number one, wait upon God. Number two, learn to discern. And I'm going to go to the rest here quickly because we're running out of time. Verse number three and four, some of it at least, says that thou mightest charge some that they teach no other doctrine, neither give heed to fables and endless genealogies which minister questions. We see that in verse number uh, three and four. Okay, we need to learn to discern. We have to learn uh, uh, to discern sound doctrine. There are those that are teaching false doctrines, those that are teaching that which is contrary to the word of God. Um, and, and the Lord has impressed upon me some messages uh, recently that I'm going to be preaching up here pretty quick, hopefully, um, uh, that, are, that are popular thoughts of today that are in contrary to the word of God. Uh, and, and, and things that have, have come up that we're all becoming familiar with, but really are in contrary to God's word, and we have to base what we believe on sound doctrine, the word of God. Now, you will learn to discern. Okay, what is this? Number two, we have to learn to discern. Number one, wait upon the Lord. Number two, learn to discern. You will learn to discern as you learn the word of God. God will teach you. God will show you how to discern right from wrong. Um, we don't have time to go there, but the Bible says Israel found themselves in a bad place when they were not following God's word. First Samuel chapter number three, verse number one, the Bible says the word of God was precious in those days. And what that means is rare. It wasn't, they weren't turning or knowing the word of God and they were, they were in a very bad position. God had to raise up Samuel to straighten Israel out. By the way, that all started with a praying mother who was praying for a son. And that was a huge turning point for Israel. What's well, the power of prayer? Learn to discern. If we grow closer to the Lord and we, we understand his word, 
we learn to discern, right? Uh, the Bible was rare in those days. Uh, there, the Bible specifically says in 1 Samuel 3, 1, that there was no open vision, no vision at that time, which means um, there was no influence of the word of God. Proverbs 29, 18 says, where there is no vision, the people perish. Where God's word, right? Uh, and sometimes we misunderstand that verse. Where God's word is not present, the people will perish. But he that keepeth the law, in contrast to no open vision, okay, he that keepeth the law, happy is he. We need to learn to discern, and you will discern right from wrong as you know God's word. I hasten on number three, how not to swerve or how not to get off track in your Christian life. Number three, uh, number one, we need to wait on the Lord. Number two, learn to discern. Number three, godly edification. Verse number four says, rather than godly edifying, which is in the faith, so do. Let's read the whole verse. Verse number four, neither give heed to fables and endless genealogies which minister questions, rather than godly edifying, which is in the faith, so do. So uh, what they do is, and what these false teachers are doing, is that they are uh, they're giving heed to fables and, and endless genealogies, and, and really their traditions, right? Rather than godly edifying, which is in faith, we need to have godly edification. Edifying each other. Edification is building each other up, okay? What can we do for each other? How do we put others first in our life? Hey, you want to stay on track in your Christian walk? Start putting others first. Edifying others. What can I do to be a blessing? What can I do to be a help to them? What can I do to instruct them in God's word in their situation? Boy, they're having a hard time. They're, they're dealing with something difficult. How can I be a help to them? How can I, how can I pray for them? How can I, say, can I say, God, give me something that I can tell them or do for them, that will be what they need at the time they need it. What a wonderful way to pray. When you start praying for others, that's when God's going to transform your prayer life. When you start saying, God, what can I do to help them? What can I do to be there for them? Number four, so we need to wait on the Lord. We need to learn to discern. We need godly edification. Number four, we need biblical love. I want you to notice verse number five. Now the end of the commandment is charity out of a pure heart and of a good conscience and of a faith unfeigned. The word charity means love. It's even a stronger emphasis on the word love, love in action. Um, love that produces a, a, you know, an action, a response. And we need to have that kind of biblical love. It really ties into a lot of the other things that we have. Right? Godly edification. How are we going to have godly edification for each other when we love each other? A biblical kind of love. How are we going to have, uh, how are we going to learn to discern when we have a love for God and His Word and we desire to know His Word because we have that love relationship with Him and we learn to discern. We wait on the Lord because we love Him. A biblical kind of love which comes out of a pure heart, according to this verse, of a good conscience and of faith unfeigned. A biblical kind of love for each other. Listen, the bulk of the message today, right? Continually doing right before the Lord, how not to swerve, how not to go astray. This is what it says here in verse number six. From which some having swerved have turned aside. How are we not going to do that? How are we not going to turn aside from sound doctrine? How are we not going to turn aside from, uh, from doing right? And we're going to wait on the Lord and learn to discern those things and edify each other, a biblical love. Listen, at the end of 2020, we're in the year 2020, Whoever thought we'd be here? How do you remember when 2020 just seemed forever away? Like we'd never hit 2020. <laughs> At the end of 2020, when we're coming up on 2021, are we going to be able to say, I've been faithful to the Lord. I've not swerved and turned aside. You know, that should be our prayer. God, I want to serve you this year. I want to put you first in my life and follow you. Where are you at? Are you there? Are you saying, Lord, I'm going to follow you. I want to, I want to do these things. I want to wait on you. I want to learn to discern by learning your word. And I want to have godly edification, the right kind of biblical love, so that I'm going straight and narrow the direction you would have me to go. God, I know you have a plan for my life. I know you have a direction for me. I want to know what that is. I want to know what your will is. And I want to follow you and not swerve, not turn to the side from that. May this year coming up, may your Christian walk be that testimony that I'm faithfully serving the Lord. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you so much. 
Lord, we know that you're here and we know that you want to do a work in our lives. And Lord, I pray that we would be ready to receive what it is you would have for us. Maybe there's a decision that needs to be made today, Lord. Maybe there's someone here today that's lost, does not know you as their Savior. Lord, you're very clear. There's one way to heaven, and that's through you who died on the cross for our sins. And Lord, I pray that that truth would come through to anyone here that doesn't know you as their Savior. Convict their hearts, Lord. May they make a decision to put their trust in you. Lord, there are those here that are believers, most of the people here I know personally, Lord, and they, they've trusted you and they know you as their Savior. And Lord, I pray every one of us would be ready to serve you with our lives and wouldn't steer away from that. We would continue. And when we do, Lord, and which we will, I pray that we just get right back on track, Lord, and, and get back to serving you and loving you. With their head bowed and their eyes closed, they're going to give an invitation. Maybe God spoke into your heart this morning. You need to get saved today? You need to get born again? Here's the question. If you were to die today, do you know for sure, 100%, you go to heaven? If you say, Pastor, I don't know that, then today's the day to get that settled. I'd love to show you from the Word of God how you can know. Maybe God spoke into your heart about a decision you need to make. I need to get back on track. I need to get back to reading the Bible or back to praying or back to being faithful to the ministry God's called me to, back to being faithful to church. Whatever it is, right? God's, God's impressed that upon your heart. Now's the time to make that decision and come to the Lord and say, Lord, this is what I need to do. Help me to do that. If God spoke into your heart this morning, when we give the invitation, you respond to that. Let's all stand as we stand together. The piano will play. As the piano is playing, if God spoke into your heart, you need to make a decision. This altar is open for you today.